This week we're tunneling back into the office using SSL encryption. This episode of Tech Shop is brought to you by Dyne. Welcome to episode 50 of Tech Shop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, a.k.a. Twitter.com slash Pablo. Wow, 50 episodes. Whoever thought we'd make so many? Anyway, this week we're looking at a really easy VPN, or virtual private network solution, that you can set up for your office. It happens to be my personal favorite because it's easy to set up, and unlike appliance VPN solutions like Cisco, you don't have a limit on the number of users who can use it. This particular type of VPN I mentioned in passing during episode 34, where we talked about a really awesome two-factor authentication program that ties in with it. Today, I'll tell you how to set up that VPN. It's Microsoft's routing and remote access VPN server using Microsoft's Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol, or SSTP for short. SSTP was introduced with Windows 2008 and Windows Vista. As you can imagine, the downside to this protocol is that it only works with Windows and only on clients running Windows Vista or newer. Other than that, it's way more secure than Microsoft's older PPTP protocol and operates on port 443, which is opened on almost everyone's firewall. I point that out because at the company where I first got into IT, we had tons of field salespeople, and the VPN we used at the time was a PPTP VPN. Oftentimes, these field salespeople would stay at hotels where port 1723 was blocked for outbound traffic, and we'd have to fight with hotel IT staff to ask them to open it up. Because port 443 is the standard SSL protocol used by banks and other websites, most places don't block it. Before I get into how to install routing and remote access with SSTP, let's take a quick break for our sponsor. When I'm not podcasting, I manage a number of web servers. If you've ever had to manage web servers, you've probably had to manage public DNS as well, right? Well, nobody does DNS better than the folks at Dyn. Let's be serious here. Uptime is the bottom line. I've used other public DNS providers before, and none of them compare to the level of service and ease of use of Dyn. Don't just take my word for it. Major companies that you use every day, like Twitter, Zappos, and Netflix, rely on Dyn for their rock-solid uptime. Quite simply, Dyn helps websites with best-in-class uptime and keeps web traffic to those sites flowing and fast. Dyn's enterprise-level DNS offers advanced features like global traffic management, load balancing, and active failover. Dyn has service tiers for companies any size to get started. Dyn services more than 4 million customers around the world. Stop taking chances with uptime and start talking to Dyn about best-in-class managed DNS. Get faster DNS lookups by using Dyn for DNS. Visit dyn.com slash podcast30, fill out the contact form, or start shopping right away and save 30% by using promo code podcast30 at checkout. Again, visit dyn.com slash podcast30. In the first part of the show, I mentioned that we're going to set up a Microsoft RAS server using SSTP. To set this up, you'll need a server running Windows 2008 or 2008 R2. 2008 R2 is better because it's easier to change certificates when they expire. You'll also need an SSL certificate. To get an SSL certificate, you can get them fairly cheap from Namecheap or GoDaddy, but I prefer to get them for free from startssl.com. Once you have your cert installed on your server, all you need to do is deploy routing and remote access by opening Server Manager, go to Role Summary, and click on Add Roles. Click on Network Policy and Access Services, then click Next twice. Select Routing and Remote Access Services, then click Next. Then click Install, then click Finish. Open Routing and Remote Access by going to Administrator Tools, Routing and Remote Access. Right click on your computer name and select Configure and enable Routing and Remote Access. Click Next, select Custom Configuration. You have to do this if you only have one NIC. And then click Next. I selected all options to keep things easy. And then I click Next again. Click Finish and RAS is installed. To set up SSTP, we again right click on our server's name and this time we click Properties. Next click on the Security tab. Leave everything as default, but at the bottom select your SSL certificate from the drop-down menu and click Apply. The RAS service will need to be restarted for the change to take effect. We're almost done. Now we have to determine how we'll hand out IP addresses to our VPN clients. We have two options. We can set a static range or we can use a DHCP relay and send the request to our DHCP server. 
To create a static range, right click on your server name, click properties, then click on the IPv4 tab. Enter the range you want, click OK, then click apply. I use this on one of my VPN servers at one of my company's co-location facilities where we don't use DHCP. This is by far the easiest way to do it. If you already have a DHCP server on your network, you need to set up a relay. To do that, we need to make sure the server's network interface is added to the DHCP relay area. To do that, right click on DHCP relay agent and click on New Interface. Select your NIC and click OK. And click OK again. Now you need to right click on DHCP Relay Agent. Click Properties, then enter the IP address of your DHCP server. Click Add, then click OK. Now you're done. The only thing left to do is open port 443 on your firewall to your RAS server so clients can connect back in. Once that's complete, your Road Warriors will have an easy way to connect back to the office using the built-in VPN client on their Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8 workstations. That's all I have this week. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up below or sound off on Facebook or on Twitter. Don't forget to like, fave, subscribe, and we'll see you next time right here on Tech Chop. Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here.